Wayward Courier, Chapter 25. Luna mentioned something about new armor before? Yes, development started several days after the failed Changeling invasion of Canterlot. And that was... Three months ago. Thomas was following Shining Armor to the guard's barracks within Canterlot Castle. Thomas was without his helmet, but the stallion was in full armor. I don't know why I'm telling you this, Shining continued. You're just a mercenary after all. Yeah, a merc that toppled an empire and brought some measure of peace to a region, the courier retorted. And again, civilian contractor, he added angrily, not happy with the stallion's attitude. The point is, this new armor should help turn things around. We've been using armor that's unfit for battle in large numbers. We needed a wake-up call. Just wish it hadn't happened the day it did, the stallion muttered unhappily. Thomas didn't say anything as he followed him into another area that lay beneath the actual barracks. Still, three months is impressive. I think it took America several years to perfect power armor for field use. Power armor? Shining asked as a pair of armored pegasus saluted him. What's that? Armor so heavy it needs an internal power supply for the weaver to even move. It will stop pretty much anything, though. Shining Armor seemed to think about it, that for a moment. Hopefully, what the smiths have been developing will be just as good then. The door they stood at swung open, and they were greeted by a plum of thick, arid smoke. The three ponies and the lone human backed away and started coughing their lungs out. <coughs> God damn it! <laughs> Should have kept my helmet on! <coughs> the courier said when he could breathe normally. Tastes worse than rad roaches. <coughs> Damn it! Iron shod. What happened this time? Shining asked before coughing again. One of your idiot unicorns enchanted one of the plates wrong. That's what. From the room emerged an earth pony, his coat a dull gray. His mane and tail a few shades lighter. His eyes were hidden beneath a large pair of goggles. I told them that they had to be precise, but no! What would an earth pony know about the armor that keeps your troops alive? He asked mockingly. I'll have a word with them, Shining Armor muttered. Courier, this is Ironshod, the one in charge of the new armor project. Ironshod, this is... Oh, I know who this is, the Earth Pony muttered as he stepped closer. He's the reason I spent seven hours hammering the plates from three sets of Night Guard armor back in shape, he growled. All he got in response was a blank look and a number of blinks. I don't... I do not understand a single word of that, Thomas replied. You sound angry, though. What was that, Griffick? Ironshot asked, turning to the captain. No, Zebrakin, and it's not that important. Shining stepped into the room, Thomas on his heels. Right, right, the new armor. Ironshot led them through the room, which was filled with a large number of metal plates on racks, along with spears and the occasional sword. In one corner was a pile fit filled with burning coals. Next to it, a large bucket of water. On the opposite side was a wall. From the entrance was a small doorway that led to a storage area. Smith! Get over here! Bring the prototype! From the depths of the workshop came a loud clinking and a sudden squawk. One moment! Ironshod slapped a hoof on his face. Damn it, Smith! What did I tell you about being careful? The Earth Pony yelled. It would be a lot easier if things were laid out better for someone with wings. The voice retorted. A griffin hovered into view from the storage room. A large number of metal plates cradled in his talons. The tip of his facial feathers had a gray tint to them, and his green eyes were wide. What is that? He asked when he caught sight of Thomas. 
Thomas was having a similar reaction. What the fuck is that? You know what a griffin is? You do? Alright, makes this a lot easier. Let me tell you, it was fucking strange. Reminded me of a night stalker, in a way. Just two completely different animals stuck together. But it seemed so flawless, so perfect. Actually, creepier because of that. Anyway, Smith. Yes, that was his name. Why is that so funny? Anyway, Smith the Griffin. It's a whole warrior culture they have. Why they were military allies with the ponies? I never actually asked. Anyway, he was there to learn about metalworking. At least, that's what I was told. After a brief explanation and introduction, Ironshot and Smith led Shining Armor into the storage area to fit him. When they asked why, the captain simply said something about Theorix. Thomas was left alone in the main workshop, and he looked around. He had no idea how anything in the room worked, though he knew enough to guess how things worked. With nothing better to do, he sat on the ground, pulled out one of the Saturnite plates from his legs, and expected it. The paintwork was horrifically scratched, the dull gray clearly visible behind the oval green, but the metallic ceramic, he still wasn't sure what it was, itself seems perfectly fine. He was still amazed that something two century old was in such great condition. The same couldn't be said for such his duster or his body armor. He didn't know how many firefights he'd gotten in, how many times he'd been shot at, whenever it was bullets, lasers, plasma, explosives, or even fire. How is this thing still in one piece? He muttered as he grabbed at his duster, riddled with bullets and laser holes. How am I still in one piece? He asked to the air, thinking briefly about all he had done and been through. He hadn't exactly been lying when he had told Debiv that he had ten pounds of shrapnel in him. He was sure that the amount that had been pulled out of his body during his misadventures across the Mojave was closer to twenty-five. He had more concussions than he could remember. Countless sprains, hairlines, fractures, and complete breaks of so many of his bones. And to think, it had all started with a pair of 9mm bullets to the brain, followed by being buried alive. From there, things only managed to get worse. It was a small miracle he wasn't clinically insane crippled after all he'd been through. Maybe I have gone insane, he mused. Why this, though? He asked himself. Some repressed childhood memories, maybe? He, w he wondered out loud. No, that doesn't make any sense. He was roused by his thoughts when he heard something he hadn't heard before. He looked up and saw the griffin coming out of the storage area. Again, he found himself marveling at how ex expressive the face was. It was probably stranger than a changeling as the bank seemed to be able to bend in ways that couldn't be possible and the feathers just seemed much smoother than they should be. Captain says you're a mer mercenary? Smith asked as he got closer. He nearly gave his normal response slash correction of civilian constructor, but didn't after thinking about it for a moment. The broken English and the way the griffin had tripped over the word mercenary made it clear that he knew little of the language. Thomas sighed and nodded as he resolved to keep the talk at tribal. Captain also says you're a monster. That true? Thomas couldn't help but laugh. That's what Shining Armor thought of him? He'd feel insulted if it weren't so funny. He made to disagree, but the words caught in his throat. In a way, he was. 
Raiders ran and hid from him sight when they saw him. Legionaries would only attack him if he was outnumbered ten to one. Even the marked men of the Divide feared him like an angry god. Was he a monster? Though he had done so much good that he refused to see himself as one. After a minute of thinking, he surprised the griffin with his answer. Not a monster, no. Monstrous, yes. Smith rose, but passed an eye's brow in confusion. Like a monster, but not, Thomas added, hoping it would clarify things. Do you have scars? The griffin asked after a brief silence. Thomas raised an eyebrow before standing. Oh, I have scars, all right, he said as he pulled off his duster, moving the plate his right arm. So many scars, he added as he unclipped the Kevlar body armor from the straps, along with the boulder lines and pouches. Too many scars, he said as he pulled up the shirt, showing the mess that was his bare chest. He smiled grimly when the griffin's beak fell open in shock. As he put all his armor back on, you couldn't help but notice the griffin's beak opening and closing repeatedly in a failed attempt to find words, and to think, the deepest scars never show. Thomas thought as he tightened the straps for, for the right arm armor plate. What are you gawking at? Ironshot asked Smith as the earth pony walked into the workshop, so wearing his goggles. So many scars smith muttered so in awe at what he had seen scars the pony asked tilting his head in confusion what are you talking about the stallion's question was unanswered as all three turned to the source of metallic clinking from the storage room emerged a pony-shaped being encased from tip to tail in gleaming silver metal plates the only thing that gave a way that there was a pony in there was Shining's armor's tail poking out of the rear end and his uncovered horn. The metal of the armor shimmered from the number of enchantments weaved into it, making the whole thing ripple as though submerged. On the head was a giant cobalt plum, much like the one found on standard helmets, and on the barrel was an indigo scar signifying rank. On the flanks was the weaver's cutie mark, allowing easy identification of the occupant at glance. A pair of slits in the helmet, barely noticeable unless you knew what to look for, allowed the weaver to see. All in all, it was incredibly imposing. You might want to do something about the chafing, Shining said, the helmet muffling his voice. 